Hi, welcome everybody back to the channel. Uh, you may have noticed in the intro there were both the GTI and the Setco logo. Uh, that is because we are now one merged company. Uh, and what that means for everybody, if you remember in last week's video, we did the introduction of Vipro 10 we've been working on for a very long time. Well, this means that you can reach out to either one of uh, any Setco representatives or GTI representatives and get a full uh, demonstration or any information you would like on any Vipro or Balance Pro products. But it is the idea of this channel not to be promotional. Uh, we do the promotional part to pay the bills, but each week we're going to do a video, whether it's on uh, proper balancing of spindles or how to balance uh, alignment frequencies to uh, seminars on best care and installation practices on spindles. Today's video is going to be on proper installation and removal of gripper fingers. So uh, I'm going to walk back onto the shop. Uh, we're going to work with one of the technicians back there and we're going to show you exactly how to do that. So please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we appreciate it. It will be a joint GTI Setco channel going forward. So uh, we thank you for your attention ahead and please enjoy uh, the content coming. Thank you. Hi, welcome to GTI Spindle Technology. I'm here with uh, technician Mike Lassert. Uh, we're going to do a video that I could not find on the internet and I thought uh, would be nice for the public to have that people that own spindles, how to remove gripper fingers and the gripper comb from a spindle, uh, which they do need to be serviced once a month and greased. And they also can be replaced several times during a spindle's life. So uh, I'm going to leave the scene here. Mike is going to take over and explain to you how to remove one. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see exactly what he's doing. Thank you, Mike. Okay. All right, here we have an HSK 100 taper um, with the tool out, as you can see. Um, the spindle obviously is not in the machine, so we have it set up to where we have a couple of hydraulic pumps here to actuate the drawbar back and forth. So the first thing you want to do, the gripper cone right here, as they call it, is locked onto the drawbar shaft with a set screw. It's going to be an eight millimeter set screw, so you'll need an eight millimeter T-handle to properly do it. Um, what I do is I actuate it. That's keeping the shaft still so I can crack that set screw. It's pretty tight on there. So we're going to actuate it until it stops there. I'm going to go in there with an 8 millimeter T handle, crack that set screw. And from here, because it being actuated, it kind of closes the fingers down. So what you want to do is just pretty much actuate it to crack that set screw. And after the set screw is cracked, you want to release it. And from here, you can simply screw the gripper cone. There's many different names for these. There's gripper cones, I've heard schnobble, other words for it. But it's the cone. Um, That's pretty easy. So it looks like it comes right out. This particular uh, gripper assembly, these fingers are attached with a hard rubber that kind of holds them all together. So there's no really way to do this. No way to be gentle. No way to be gentle, really, but you want to be kind of gentle because if you just grab onto one finger and rip it, you could break, that break this rubber, which it's still functional after that, but you know you, you don't want to do that. Um, obviously, you look at from wear uh, point of view to make sure that the lips are all nice and still clean. Yeah, this this one's in really good condition, this particular one, but it doesn't have any lube on it, which is a bad thing. You want to get these really nice and lubed up. Right. And they sell a special lubrication for that as well. They do. They do. It's uh, it's called Metaflux. Metaflux. Very good. It's, um, it's pretty special stuff. Works and that really is supposed good. supposed to be done once a month uh, to you know, keep them lubricated. Uh, you don't need to remove the gripper comb for that. You can brush it in. Um, but uh, this is how you remove 
a gripper set and the installation is exactly reverse except Mike you might want to just tell them they'll have to either measure or um, yeah well actually um, Tom there's one more part of this gripper assembly that I haven't taken out yet um, to do this particular job yep. you need a couple either o-ring hook yep. picks or a couple of magnets which I like to use okay. I'm gonna go in there and um, Pretty important part. Sets the angles on the back side of these gripper uh -huh. fingers, which give you the help give you the pull force. Um, goes on the back side like this. So of course when reassembling the gripper assembly, you must put this piece in first. Or else it won't go in if the gripper fingers are in there. So um, you just have to set their knockout for their tool. Uh, after installation. Yeah, yeah, I could, I could show you that um, after I just give this a nice coating of this Metaflux. And you don't have to get too crazy, a little bit goes a long way. Put that right back in there. And still, I'm doing this all with, with it out being, being actuated. So the draw bar is in the uh, relaxed position. And I usually take the fingers. I'll do this by hand. I'll just kind of rub it on all where the contact's going to be. Some people will also lube up the inside of a tool holder and you know do a couple of tool changes with it, and that'll also get into the idea. contacts and lube them up where it's supposed to be. The main reason for disassembling it to grease it is to get that first piece that I just put back in there. Yep. Because you can't get that with a tool holder. So at this point again, just gotta kinda be careful. I usually grab it one finger and start it. You can kind of feel it fall in. Just kind of feel it fall in. Any uh feel like you're gonna break it, kinda pull it out and start over again. Which is normal. I've been I Even I got to do it a bunch of times sometimes to get it right. You've probably installed about 600 of these. Like <laughs> At least. Okay, so that's in there. Yep. That did go in nice and easy. So, all the angles on this cone, you want to get nice and lubed up. This stuff's really good because the coolant won't wash it away. Yep. A lot of people would think never sees is the same stuff, but it's not. It's not yeah. even close. And that'll do more harm than good, that never sees. It'll actually wear stuff because it's very abrasive. It looks very similar, but not the same stuff. So I usually get it hand tight like that, and then I'll... Um, I'll go ahead and actuate it so you would, you know, if it's in the machine, you would unclamp it. I can see it moving, yeah. And um, with this particular cone, it's got a couple of notches here that I can get onto with my spanner wrench. Mm -hmm. From there, I can. You know. Your microphone on top of this <laughs> Thanks. So from there, when it's still actuated, you go in with the eight millimeter T handle. Yeah. And this is going to lock that cone, so it can't move. It won't rattle free. It's really tight. You don't have to get on there with an impact. Um, that does more harm than good. If that set screw gets stuck in there, and you also don't want to lock tight that set screw. Okay. You just want to get it good and tight. Good. All go. right, well, we did both the removal and installation. Uh, hopefully this video will be very educational for people that have to do this work on the machine. Uh, we thank you. Please reach out to us on the web at www.gtispindle.com or call us at 603-669-5993. Thank you.